Okay, so off we go. What I've got here is some, um, this is actually the palette I used last night. Well, the plate I used last night. There's a nice big lump of um, Alkid there. There's a giant slug of um, Payne's Grey. Down here's some uh, ultramarine blue. And uh, I'll be adding a little bit of royal blue. That's the pale blue uh, here. That bit, if you can make it out. Uh, I'll add more of that later. But for now, what I'm going to do is just get a few markers on the um, on the board so that I know where my horizon is. So what I don't want to do, it's always good to tell people what you don't want to do first, not necessarily what you want to do. What I, what I uh, don't want to do is cut the picture in half. That makes it difficult because then you have the sky fighting the landscape. And, you know, I like, I like interesting skies. Um, so I'm going to make the sky uh, area bigger, although the mountains will encroach on, on the sky, obviously. So I'm going to sort of keep it, I suppose, the um, you know middle distance foreground is going to be approximately that far up the painting and no more. So here's a little trick. I mean, wonder, just check, see if you can see what I'm doing here. So I've got my finger here like that on the brush. So if I put my finger on the bottom edge of the board down here, and I just touch the top of the brush there. I've got a mark now. And then I do the same the other side. I know that those two are roughly the same distance from the bottom. So, you know, some people will draw a line across there, but uh, I tend not to. What I'll do here is just to put my hand roughly, I mean, I wouldn't bother normally, I'm just showing you in case you want to know. I put my, my uh, brush approximately there, allowing for this distance between there and the tip. Uh, to to sort of, you know, make some kind of, um, so that they're roughly the same. Oh, just went out of focus. Okay, I have to watch that. I don't know why it does that. It could be because it's a white board at the moment, and uh, once I get some, my hand in the way, it gives it something to focus on. So anyway, I've got this, um, I've got these marks here, so I can easily connect these up now without worrying about whether I'm going to be reasonably horizontal or at least not necessarily horizontal but at least the same distance from the bottom of the board i haven't done a wonderful job of it but it'll do it's got it's close enough for me so what i'm thinking is i'm thinking of a road coming along here and possibly a turning in the road maybe it'll come around around there I don't know yet, we'll see. And then possibly one, the other side of the road might be there. Something like that. And it leads off into the distance. So above that mark there, there'll be a little bit of snow. And in fact, there might even be some trees. I'm only doing this really quickly just to show you how, how you mustn't worry. That's my job, so take away the worry. So I'm gonna have a little tree there. What is white is probably going to be well. Is going to be snow. So I think I might. Uh, I don't. I want to avoid the dead centre of the picture. Some people like to put stuff in the middle. It's not advised uh, because it's it's quite. Um, it does cut the picture in half a bit. So I'm going to I'm going to move it to the left slightly, and I'm going to have a, a, a tallish tree there, but not much. The other trees there. This is going down and away from us, maybe. That's, that could work, I suppose. Um, people say, why don't I put buildings in and things like that? Well, I don't want to. And I like the idea of showing the planet without any human signs. I've done my share of that stuff, um, as I frequently say, over the years. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll show you some at the end of the video. Um, just to prove to you I can actually do detail. I just don't like doing it. It just seems to take too much time. And um, so now I could um, I could put a building. It's not difficult to put a hint of a building in a picture. I could put a roof there, which could have snow on it. Um, a little big lump of snow there, and it could go off down that way, just the other side. I don't know. Don't really want to actually, so I'll turn that into a tree. Maybe one day I'll put a few buildings in just to just to keep people happy now then sky okay so I'm gonna just do obviously my skies tend to be a little bit on the wild side 
just something that I can't help. I remember when I was um, a student, maybe it was before I was a student, could be, I, I used to go to, uh, I used to live near a town in the UK called, um, um, well, I lived in Lewis, uh, and I, uh, which was near to Brighton. And in Brighton there was a shop, a gallery shop. Um, and the, there was a particular artist now, I, was, I think I was probably a few months away from going to college when I saw this guy's paintings. And his, his name, funnily enough, was Clay, spelt K-L-E-E. -E, like, and there's another famous, very famous artist called Clay. And, um, but this was, a, this was the Brighton Clay. And I think he only died a few years ago. He was, you know, he lived to be a good old age. But he painted these, these landscapes that were quite... Um, extraordinary and he specialized in the skies he used lots of colors they were almost psychedelic i suppose but um i remember looking at them and thinking wow that's pretty cool and wondering whether i could do that and i think if you i don't know let me sit let's let's this is interesting if you wonder enough about whether you can do something and keep wondering, maybe that will build up the required amount of obsession that you need to actually do well uh, at your chosen discipline, whatever that may be. Uh, anyway, it really gripped me. So I thought, you know, once I'd been to college and I actually started painting, I started to sort of get interested in what I could do with skies. And uh, it sort of took over from there. So, um, yeah, I like my skies to be turgid and interesting. Now, I did this tree shape here. I'm not, who knows? I might keep it. I don't know. But I'll remember the fact that that's there. And I think I'm just going to bring my sky right down here. So, whatever you were thinking about me drawing the picture in the beginning and then painting it, forget it. It doesn't quite work that way with me. Sorry about all the rumbling. Doesn't matter what I do to this. Can I stop it? Uh, maybe I, if I wedge something in the back there. But anyway, maybe it'll make everything more interesting. So uh, I'm going to keep uh, that, that white board up there showing through because I want that to stay reasonably paint free at the moment. I've got to fix this. It'll drive me nuts. Back in a second. Right, I think I've fixed that. Ah, oh, silence. Okay, so all I'm doing really is just getting colour on the board. Um, for those of you who uh, paint pictures or want to paint pictures and, you know, you're afraid of starting because you'll make a mistake, um, make the mistake in the beginning. In other words, you could say this is the mistake. This is, a, this is undoubtedly a mess but it's semi-controlled so there we are we've got a, a little bit of the sort of foundation color just fill that bit up there okay covered in brush strokes all different tones of this uh, grayish bluish color that I've made here and um, now I'm going to just make a few other uh, changes to it, just taking some of the paint off the brush, not bothering, uh, uh, well I'll, here we go then, repeating again, I don't use turpentine, I leave the brushes uh, until I finish the painting, and then I put them in detergent, uh, the type of detergent used in a washing machine, massage them a bit and then f uh, rinse them in uh, lukewarm water, and you have to rinse them for quite a long time, but um, it's worth it, you don't have the smell of turpentine and uh, um, you don't have to worry about disposing of nasty things like turpentine. It's horrible. It really is ghastly. Anyway, um, so there's some there's some colours there. I want to make a few little dramatic statements in the sky before I start putting the mountains on. And uh, at this stage, you may be thinking, "Well, where the mountain? Where the, well, how are you going to do the? Well, how are you going to draw the mountains? Well, I'm going to draw everything with the brush. You see, you don't have to actually um, 
have a pencil and draw mountains. I'm going to just put a nice bit of dark and threatening up here. Uh, I know for a fact that at least one of my Facebook followers, I can go, I can tell by the comments that uh, this person makes. When I do something like this, they say, oh, it's scary, I don't like it, it frightens me. And, um, well, try not to be too frightened, it's only a painting, it's, um, it's just me trying to get drama and emotion into my painting. And it's like, you know, if it, it's, I suppose I could say, well, if you don't like, if you find this sort of thing scary and sinister or what, I don't know what, but um, don't look at it. It's entirely up to you. If you, were, if you wouldn't read a book because it was, would creep you out, then I suppose don't look at a painting if it has the same effect. But it is just a painting and all I'm after is just a, f a feeling, really. So there's the basics of a few clouds, believe it or not. I know some people don't believe it. I can tell by the, uh, the number of um, little down sum symbols I get on my YouTube. So you get lots of, I get lots of the up sum, you know this. But uh, there are always there are always some of these, and they they're usually the first one appears after about an hour or two of my video being uploaded. I think there are professional people out there who are employed to go around putting some thumbs down. But it doesn't really matter anyway. It all it all helps to feed the algorithm. Even if you do put a thumbs down, you're actually encouraging people to look at my video because you are interacting. The fact that you are interacting means that there's some kind of interest there. So bear that in mind. Okay, now, this brush uh, is, is very dark at the moment. I'm gonna keep it like that. Don't need to do anything to it. What I'm gonna do is just put a few clouds on because I want the cloud ultimately see the clouds have to be behind everything they have to be behind the mountains and um, let's get a bit of snow on the ground before we do anything else down here so let's uh, let's have some snow there a bit of distant snow you can buy uh, oil paint that is snow colored uh, it's called white and when you apply the snow color the white it will mix with the colors that are here and help make various tones and shadows so there's something that's really bright as I move the knife just check I'm not in the way I'm notorious for getting in the way work it into the blue a little bit uh, with the sky color and you'll get the two mingling and you can get some other tones appearing in your in your snow. So you, as you may be able to see, I'll try zooming in on that uh, in a second just so that you can um, see what I'm talking about. But mountains. So what shape mountain should we have? Let's start off, let's start off on this side and have um, something really big and uh, th they don't have to be, um, you know, triangles. That's a whole different painter which I'm sure you've all seen who paints who used to paint uh, that sort of scene with lots of fir trees um, I don't do that so anyway the hills can be um, this shape don't be afraid of making a mistake if, if you if you if anyone thinks that they can just start painting and paint a picture with perfectly with no mistakes um, then that person is very misguided because you have to make the mistakes it's an obvious thing really you know if you you make mistakes and you learn have fun make all kinds of shapes in your in your painting and always remember you have to keep it loose if you don't keep it loose then uh, you're, you're, you're trying well you're trying too hard I know that might sound silly but 
you can you can try too hard in a painting and it can hold you back it can make you hesitant and it's actually much more interesting to have uh, a definite movement in your paint rather than a mark that shows hesitation so down here let me just put a little bit of snow below this trackway here just a little bit of something for later one of my favorite sayings it's a little something for later over here then let's have um let's just sort of make a mark see what we get So I'm, if it's a little bit like um, drawing in the negative, in other words, drawing on a black background, even though this is not black, obviously, but drawing with white on black, um, that's drawing in the negative, so that you you are actually drawing the highlights or painting the highlights. The the shadows and the uh, midtones are already there. That's in all this this colour that's up here. Every time you do this, you're going to end up with a very skanky palette knife, so always give it a wipe, get that off, and um, obviously dispose of these carefully in a metal container, get them out of your studio at the end of the day, uh, just in case you have spontaneous combustion. It can happen with linseed oil and rags. And I'm going to just chuck on quite a lot of paint here. And wherever I've got on the land down here, you see, uh, I'll be adding much more dark to that soon. But uh, the sky up here, I should actually have done more of the sky before I put this mountain in. But I uh, just wanted to sort of get you get started on that. If I put some white here in the sky, just smear it around. Don't be precise at all. And I'm putting the white on the white board to keep it as clean as possible because I just like a little bit of light sky. If I've got dark sky here, I want light sky over that side. It's a bit of a, a bit of a tradition in painting. You, know, you have the threatening side and you have the nice bright sunny, well it's not exactly bright sunshine, but uh, the sort of less threatening side over there. I think in symbolism in paintings it can show hope for the future. So here's 2020 and over here I'm working on 2021 and let's uh, let's hope that improves next year and maybe people will start coming back here to learn because uh, uh, this year was a mess in many ways I'm actually um, I had flu a, few, a couple of months ago now whether it was Covid I didn't go to the doctor to get it checked because it was very mild you know, it was over very quickly but it's left me with um, unbelievable fatigue extremely um, boring I suppose just just trying to stay awake and today is actually quite good because I haven't I haven't had a nap yet today and it's um it's already the afternoon I don't know what time it is I won't stop to look at my clock have a little bit more something there. Clouds always off the edge of the painting, always take them off the edge. It looks amateurish if you make them comfortably fit in the picture. Okay, so there we are. It's um, a mess at the moment, but it's intended to be. I'm going to take that one off there as well. Okay, now this mountain here, um, I'm probably going to, I don't know, I might, I might demolish it a little bit. I'm going to fuzz the edge up a little bit here. There is a reason. There's always a reason for doing this. Okay. There we go. And wipe the palette knife. Now then, I have this brush. This is a... Well, I used to think it was a wallpaper pasting brush, but I don't think it is. I think it's just a very big painting brush because I don't think many people use wallpaper nowadays. So I'm going to just blur the sky a little bit. This is the, um, this is a, my normal um, 
technique with clouds because it's so fast. Gets you producing something quickly in the painting that looks cloud-like. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to use this bottom mountain here and turn that into a bit of cloud. And you may notice that most of the paint's this side and uh, a little bit there, but it's the side of the brush, like so, not straight on, but the side. And, and it's a light touch. You don't want to do it too heavy and you have to know exactly when to stop. If you overdo it, it just um, it ruins it. I'm going to change all this mount, this sort of first attempt at the mountain here. I'm going to knock that back and actually turn it into a little bit of cloud there. Because I don't think I'm ready for the mountains yet. Now, if I want to break this up, there's a little bit of a line through there. If I want to break that up a bit, I can either bang my hand on it accidentally, like I just did. That will do it. Or, um, because there's quite a lot of paint there, just take off some of the paint. And then just use the corner. Break up any lines that I don't want. I know that um, there'll be people, there'll be artists watching this and they'll be cringing because um, s quite a lot of artists think that everything in a painting should be planned meticulously before you do anything to it. And I have to say I strongly disagree with that. It's like the difference between um, jazz and uh, concert, um, you know, classical music. I guess, in a way, this isn't like abstract, which is total jazz, it's semi-jazz. So what I'm, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm recalling images in my head that I can, I'm luckily enough to be able to store. I've always been able to do that. Very useful. Um, and I... Okay, one more. Right across there. There we go. Um, but I sort of... I, I, I call up these images that I store and I just sort of bring them out. So the mountain here may be something that I've seen somewhere and the one here be somewhere from somewhere else. But there is a there is a particular place I went to in the Pyrenees, you know, on the border between Spain and France. And this was quite a few years ago. Um, and it was a really miserable day. My goodness, it was freezing cold. I, I w didn't take the correct um, clothing and so I was quite cold most of the time I was there but I was determined to take a few days off anyway. I just went for a quick walk. Um, I timed it so that I would actually get back alive and not die of hypothermia and I obviously did make it back but there was a there was this hill and the light was behind it so it was quite dark and very foreboding. Um, and I think maybe I'll sort of call on that from my from my um, brain library. So I'm going to use basically mostly Payne's Grey and see if I can get this 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 shape that was here and I, know, I remember it was almost tabletop shaped quite high so I'm going to put that sort of here I think. It had this sort of look to it. It was always it had this like line that was almost appearing to drop but never quite and it was coming up again and then down and then so and so. So I'll just use that as a shape, almost a sheer drop there and just put that on there like so. Down here and once this dries off a little bit I can then start adding a bit more light behind that. And there were actually trees along the top. I won't put them in yet, but um, I could put a hint of something, uh, some kind of texture. But you could actually see these tiny little tree trunks along the top. It was extremely um, fascinating to look at. And I'm going to add snow to it because there was actually a bit of snow clinging to this, this hill. And then I'll come down across here and I may put a few, I don't know, maybe I'll put a 
tree right down here and maybe something here just to break up that area I don't want to be too too close to the middle as I think I might have said earlier and then that'll come down here I think I think maybe there should be some kind of distant forest thing along there yeah that could be nice So, uh, yeah, I was saying a little while ago, anyway, I think I had that flu thing, possibly. I don't remember losing my sense of taste, but all I, what I was aware of was that everything tasted absolutely dreadful. It was like, uh, it's almost like a metallic taste. But it's left me exhausted. You know, I really, um, you can probably hear it in my voice. Uh, my voice isn't, hasn't got the kind of strength that it used to have before this thing. Hopefully it will come back, but uh, never mind if it doesn't. It's um, as long as it as long as it works. Okay, now as you can see, that's quite a sort of foreboding, dark sort of shape there. And then we come down to the countryside, and I think behind this, I've got this thing here, which could be a I don't know, it could be a wood. I want to keep that bit of light that's next to it there. That's quite interesting, but I also want over here, I, want, I do want some kind of mountain in the distance. Now, I'm going to avoid this triangular shape somehow. I always find a way eventually. Maybe a bit of a triangular shape, I don't know. Maybe I'll make it vague up here and misty. It's always uh, something that. Um, impressionists often used to do if they didn't really want to paint something they would make it vague and mysterious so that uh, the, the anguish goes away okay so we've got a track in the foreground we've got snow pretty well right across here and I'll be adding a few bits of foliage to that then over there we've got the horizon I suppose will be if you can see that point there that's where the, the mountain thing is coming down, and I'll continue that in a minute. And then through here be the sort of view that goes on for forever. I hope so, anyway. So let's put in a, let's fill in some dark over here. Notice there that I'm using most of the side of the brush, and slowly, not too fast there, because I want to lay paint onto the surface. If I go too quickly, it'll just... Um, take it off like so does that even show up no probably not but anyway trust me on that again so here's my nice big foreboding hill or whatever it is a little bit of darkness just there a little bit of dark next to the light it's always a good thing gives it gives it that little um twinkle um and the road i'm going to darken the road a little bit more And I quite like the contrasts in there with the two tones. It's quite interesting. Could be some kind of track mark, I suppose. And then the road comes around here. Maybe there's a. Uh, whoops, that's wrong. But never mind. It's um, curves. Curves in perspective are tricky things. But uh, I'll work on that later when I've worked at the bottom. I'm just sort of chucking stuff on there. I think we might have a few sort of don't know puddly type things here so where the snow has melted let's have a couple of them up here so we've got my path D making these videos is quite interesting actually because when I start out I think I think to myself what am I going to talk about what on earth am I going to say but so far he said I seem to find enough things to say there we are okay well it's certainly got a certain amount of mystery to it so at the moment not happy with this and I think it's because I know what it is okay I know exactly what it is that bend down and the bend up 
is a bit dis discomforting. So I'm going to lift the middle, continue it along, and let it fade off there. That lifts it, it puts us down on the road a bit more. Rather than if you, you see, if you take that away, that little bit there, that dark bit, we're looking down on the curve. If you put the curve up, we are now level with the road. We're actually standing on the road. So I'm going to take that right round the corner, like so. And then I might emphasize some of the lines that come around here with white later. And over here, I'm going to first of all darken the bottom of the mountain. Okay, so I'm not going to end up with a dead straight line there because that would look rather silly I think. I'm going to break that line by putting something dark here, just a line. You see I'm not, I'm not saying, when I say I'm putting something dark here it's because at the moment I don't know what it is. It could be a hedge line, it could be, I don't know, it could be something else. But it's just something, it's sort of a, it's a structural statement. So I could then say well okay well then maybe there is going to be some kind of things in there breaking up the view between this line and the line behind. So by breaking it like that leaves it sort of open to suggestion. I won't leave it exactly like that. I'll be putting white in there as well. But uh, that's just to sort of, it's just to give you an idea really. My goodness, I hope my voice holds out. Um, over here then, let's see. I think we should bring this mountain closer to us. So to do that, I need to just put something there, I think. Maybe that'll do it. It's just a, it's just a hint, you know. This is this, this detail without detail process, and then down here, I think this, I could have like, I think like puddles in the snow, almost, and then bring that line across here. This all helps to bring the foreground either side of us, rather than us looking down on it. We're, we're actually standing on the ground. We're not hovering, so you have to sort of allow for this. Uh, it's a, a, again, it's a mistake a lot of people make, you know, they do a path coming at you like this. They'll do like the end of the path there and they'll do a couple of lines like this. Now that means that you are either hanging onto a drone looking down on that path or, you, or you've uh, discovered the ability to fly. And um, what you want to do really to get the feeling that people can walk into your painting, you have to bring the person to the foreground or bring the foreground to the person. So you imagine you're standing here, how wide a path will look. Test it, go out in your garden, stand on a path that's at least five or six feet wide, and then look at how wide it is in front of you next to your feet. Uh, you'll be surprised at how far to the right and how far to the left it goes. You could even take a piece of cardboard with a hole, a window cut in it and look through that window and see where the lines actually disappear off the edge. Um, I'm, I'm, I think I have to do a, another video on perspective at some time to get that message over more clearly. So here's a, here's a mountain type thing here. I'm just going to put a few marks on there. Now this, this again seems quite ludicrous, but there's always, you know, as I said, there's always some kind of reason for doing this. So just a few little dark bits like so. Let's have another even darker one just there think why not okay down here so this this load of mountains here is coming down behind these trees and there could be uh, obviously there's a bit of a gap between this and the mountain and there will be snow in between the two okay so there's just some shapes like so so far, so good. Easy, isn't it? Really easy. Not difficult. You only think it's difficult. I'm going to put a, a few marks just on these white bits here. And I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to put some, um, with a piece of paper, I'm going to put a few little dabs of light blue there. Just very subtle difference between that blue and this. Whether it appear on the video, I'm not sure, but uh, looking in the camera, it seems okay. Right, so let's make some snow. Um, 
palette knife. I think I need to squeeze a bit more white out of my tube. Oh, I beg your pardon. I need to squeeze a bit more snow out of my snow tube and um, get that on the palette. You do For this sort of painting, you will use quite a lot of paint. Well, depending on how big your painting is, of course, um, I can highly recommend this size. Um, it's sort of com well, it's comfortable for me. It means that I can do a painting in, I suppose, about about an hour. Sometimes I drag them out to almost two hours to, just to make the video a bit more informative. Because I wouldn't normally see if I was painting this on my own, I wouldn't be talking. I'd be listening to music, maybe talking to myself occasionally because you know we're all slightly nuts, aren't we? And um, I'd be sort of getting on with it more, if that uh, makes sense. So I'm, I'm going to do some nice slopes, some distant slopes here, going up this this mountain. Just a few marks. Let's have a little bit of snow just there. Now when you put something on like this and you get that nice little twinkle there, don't be in a hurry to go over it. Don't, don't eradicate it. Leave it. If you want to eradicate it, give yourself a few minutes to really ponder on whether it needs to be eradicated. I'm going to put a few lines across there. And the reason being is because in my mind, you see, I can see somewhere I've seen in the past where you get these lines and the slopes like so, gradually building it up. Now here there's some nice changes of tone. Uh, it's I can see it in the camera um, and obviously I can see it on the painting but whether it'll actually be in the video afterwards and show up. You see in this area there's this light bit here and there's like a line coming down there and then you've got this dark bit here with a little bit of light there and then below it another bit of dark. Okay, So those shapes they need to be used and I'm going to use them to make the structure so I'm going to sort of try and capitalize on a few bits I, I quite like this dark bit here and I like that light coming around there so I'm just going to put some light here and drag that across and sort of feather it and make this totally unpredictable movement up here Okay. Don't forget, you have to break eggs to make omelettes. So um, what may look like a complete total pig's ear here isn't necessarily a pig's ear. It's, uh, it's just a broken egg. And while I'm looking at this, I'm going to put some snow across there. When you do this also, you've got to bear in mind you want to give a feeling of scale. You want distance and you want a sort of majestic size to your mountain or whatever you call it. So you've got to think, how am I going to get that effect? The way you're going to get it is to use lots of little textures in the distance, biggish, simple shapes uh, in uh, in the foreground but uh, you know allow for your marks to decrease as they go away from us big bold marks smaller marks okay um, up here so we've got we've got trees on the top of this thing but of course we're down here looking up so we're not going to be looking down on these trees we're looking up at them so you've got to allow for that too you've got to get your perspectives right so we've got possibly a bit of snow there. Now that you see that just one touch, one touch can make a difference. It's totally fouled up the um, palette knife so I wouldn't use this on there again. You have to learn this other little trick too is know when to stop, know when to move on to the next part of the painting. Now I know that even though that's got some of the dark on it I could use it somewhere else where I don't want the white to be quite so intense. So I suppose I could put it there Although that's actually come out quite nicely, I'm going to, I'm going to just muck up that bit here because I want, I want a bit of a slope. And I'm quite surprised that that paint came out so clean there. But there you go. 
I'm not always right. So. So back to um, back to what I was saying. You know, if you're going to paint something like this, first thing to remember: don't worry about making mistakes. You'll make a mistake, guarantee it. I make mistakes. I mean, the painting that I painted yesterday, the one I showed you at the beginning of the video, that was the, the successful outcome of yesterday. But there was a painting before that. Which I even videoed, and it just didn't work. Don't don't go thinking that you know when you get um, when you when you've been painting a long time, it doesn't mean everything will work all the time. Th things will go wrong. It's just um, it's just part of life. I didn't I, I I didn't really feel totally recovered enough yesterday to paint. I'm much better today, I have to say. Um, and I think that reflected in, in what I uh, attempted. So uh, hopefully one is recovering properly. Okay, so I want to make this look more interesting. At the moment, you see, it's a big slab, a big slab of something, and I think I need to get into that and um, de-slab it. So I think I'm going to really bring out the snow that's the slope that comes up here and I got to do something about this it's a little bit of a right angle there don't really like that so I think first things first <laughs> it's one of those strange sayings isn't it first things first second things second right I'm gonna I'm gonna really pile on some white here and drag it up there like so let's just be brave and then another one below it. Again, totally fouled up this, so wipe it clean. And then I'm going to smear it a bit more. And I'm going to bring it down at the bottom here. And then I'll use the lightness of this to put something like foliage trees, whatever over the snow that is behind the trees. You always have to think in layers when you paint. You've got to be conscious, even though the paint is wet, obviously this is all being done um, a la prima, so there's no, I'm not waiting for anything to dry on this. And it, it is one of the things that scares people, I think, when they, they start doing something like this, because they think they're going to just completely ruin it. And um, it is possible to ruin it, I could ruin this. Hopefully I won't. So be a little bit careful about how you lay the paint down. I mean, that's I've gone far enough on that now. If I do any more, I think I'll um, start to uh, um, ruin it. Paper, as you can see. Oh, someone asked me about this paper. I said, where do I get it? Uh, I, th I think they said that they got it on. They got some paper on Amazon Denmark. The person who wrote the note to me did. Their name didn't sound Danish, but anyway. And the prices were were incredible, absolutely through the roof. Uh, I must reply to the comment, but just to give you an idea, these rolls are quite big. Here's here's one. Um, this is the next one in the queue. I'm not I'm not paid to tell you who this is supplied by because they're not supplied I go and buy them so uh, it's APTA and these cost about um, under three euros and that that will one of these will probably um, see me through I don't know ten paintings so um, it goes a long way I, I recycle as much as I can I mean I have lots of pieces here uh, below the painting there, which I'm not going to throw away because I can use them later for different, um, for achieving different textures. Back to the road for a minute before I go on to there. Um, I'm going to put snow down here on the bottom edge of the uh, trackway. 
and I'm going to put it down not it's not haphazard I it looks as though I'm sort of just dabbing around here but I'm actually thinking in my mind's eye what would the snow look like on this sort of road it's sort of semi melted and it's in lumps and it's a bit sludgy it's going to mix with these darker colors here because obviously when you break snow down it becomes a little bit more translucent and you can you can see the sludgy color or the color of whatever the ground is through the snow so you're going to get some of that some of that showing and I want it to look I want it to look cold and miserable but even in a cold and miserable painting you hopefully can still achieve a a beautiful effect an effect that will stop people in their tracks and make them think my goodness I want to be able to do that I'm going to go and see this crazy guy in France and let him teach me how to do it and um, some people some people who commented on YouTube have said uh, last year they said oh I'm, I've seen your things I'm coming to France and they actually did they they um, turn up they that it's not just talk they actually turned up for lessons which is great I met people last year from all over the world some came from Australia some came from New Zealand only only two or three from France I think wasn't that there weren't that many people from France uh, England Scotland Ireland um, a, a lot from the Ameri from America there we go nice bits of broken snow how is that looking does that look cold and miserable just looking in the camera it is actually looking quite chilly now I think sometimes you might get a track in the snow you may get a line like so yeah yeah anyway I was saying people came from all over the world um, I have to say there wasn't there wasn't one person that I didn't like they were all such nice people um, and several people who had actually said to me that they'd never painted before ever and um, it's amazing what you can extract from people I mean there, there was one couple who must have I think in their late 70s or 80s um, and had just never painted maybe dabbled when they were younger but uh, anyway they came here and um, painted away I usually get people painting by the end of the second day I uh, beg your pardon by the middle of the second day the first day they have to put up with me droning on about what and why and all kinds of stuff to get them relaxed um, okay still not seeing a road yet I'm seeing a dark shape but this is this is an interesting point um, when you paint something you mustn't just paint it like painting by numbers you've got to pick up the essence of the thing you are painting in other words it has to say it's going to sound really silly it's not just road it's got to say road in capital letters so that when you look at the painting first thing you see is oh, the road okay not just a streak of color although when you become very proficient your streak of color will say road but you've got to you've got to sort of keep it in your mind particularly now you've got this far in a painting um, that I'm gonna, I'll tell you what I'm going to do here I'm going to put a nice bit of a slope there and just take that off just see what that looks like oh yes yeah. yes like that you've, you've got to um, you've got to get the essence of the object so that there is no doubt that what you've just painted is a road and not just a streak of color 
So I still need to define the edge of this road more strongly. I may leave it till it dries off. Don't know yet. I don't want to spend all of the painting down here. I want to get back up there and do a few things in a minute. So let me just have a look in the camera. Yep, I'm still not totally happy with that. Right, so I'm going to get a whole load now. Uh, get your words right. I'm going to get a whole new load of paint here. So here's the weather forecast. More snow is expected. And there we are. Shovel fools of the stuff. Titanium white, for those who are interested. Oh, ah, right, uh, the manufacturer is this company. Uh, does that actually pick up the light? Le Franc and Bourgeois. That's the, um, that's the brand. I'll put a link below in the info box so that you can uh, um, go and buy it online if you wish. Don't think, I think it's quite hard to get in the States. You can get it uh, in England. In fact, I'll put a link to the English site. Uh, I could give you a link to the French site, but um, unless you speak French, uh, you're going to find the website tricky. A little bit more snow there, I think. Yeah. So, we've got a bit of snow here. Put that there. I want to. Oh, right, hang on, back to the road. I know what it is, it's this bit here. I want to fill that in almost solid white. I want a few bits in there in between some of these shapes. Am I keeping out of the way? Am I being a good boy, keeping my shoulder out of your face? Okay, that's looking fine. Of course, that's just my opinion. You may totally dis <laughs> you may totally disagree with that. I have no idea how long I've been recording, but uh, it's going to be quite a hefty video. They seem to end up round about an hour, I suppose, and. Um, most people seem to have voted uh, that they like long videos which is good because um, the longer you watch a video I mean the, av the average viewing time is around I think on my videos is only about 11 or between 11 and 15 minutes which is actually strange enough um, according to the research I've done is statistically reasonably high the longer that people look at my videos, uh, the more advertising it attracts. Um, I'm sorry to say in some ways because some people don't like the adverts. Um, but the adverts are there so that YouTubers actually get paid. Otherwise, we're doing everything completely free. And uh, let's face it, um, we all have to eat a little bit, a little bit more. Just there. So, uh, yeah, you can always skip the adverts. I think after five seconds you get the chance to skip it. If you really must, you can use an ad blocker. Um, and if it works OK, you won't see any adverts at all. But just think what amazing offers you could be missing. I, uh, I don't really know who advertises on my pages. Uh, some of it is some... Uh, I think quite a lot of um, budding pop stars, sometimes they'll put up an advert, heaven knows what they pay, but uh, you know, an advert will pop up for someone singing something and uh, they're just trying to get attention obviously. I'm going to do a little something over here, just bring that mountain out a little bit there, just to change the shape of the light as it was disappearing behind the... Uh, the hill. In here I'm going to start putting in the impression of a few trees. Now this is all very monotone so uh, don't expect high detail, well you won't get detail anyway with my paintings, but um, I'm just going to sort of push into these areas here just to sort of give the impression of something growing. 
I'm not going to do much of that. In fact, I might just leave it there. I may, I may do a follow-up when this is completely dry. At the moment, it, I may be, um, I may be making problems here. So I think I might simplify that down again. Just turn that into a tone. Maybe I can get away with it another way. But it may be better if I let that dry. Okay. So where are we? A bit more snow. I think it needs something here. I, I, um, I was saying earlier about how I, I use my memory. I've got this uh, eidetic memory, which is very handy. I have in my head um, a great big store of places I've seen because I just don't forget. I don't forget places that I've seen. I have no idea why I'm like that, but it's just something I was born with. Um, so I sort of keep pulling these things out, but what I do. I, I actually say to myself when I'm when I'm doing an area of a picture like this, I, I think to myself, I say, go there, go to where you saw this, and remember what it was that caught your eye, and um, it sort of pulls up these images. I'll, I'll give you an idea how it works. Uh, I um, for years I worked um, as a magazine designer in London. One magazine I worked on, um, I spent, I suppose, 14, I think it's 14 years working for this one particular magazine, which um, I was the uh, art editor and design editor on. And I'd say it was almost one of the most tedious, boring jobs I've ever had. But of course, you know, you need, you need work. Anyway, I stayed there all that time, and it was, it was sort of, how can I put it? It paid, it paid my, well, you know, it paid me money not to feed my family. But um, when I look back on it, I think of the, the um, all the office rubbish that you have to put up with sometimes. Um, before I went there, I was actually a freelancer, and I, I just thought, well, let's try being employed for a while, and I, I, I had no intention of staying there that long. Oh, that's interesting. It's coming along. So I stayed there and I the thing that what I'm getting at is that um, the magazine was a uh, still is, it's still around. Um, it's a weekly magazine. And I can remember every every page I designed. Uh, I can remember every picture. If you if you give me a copy of the magazine from thirty years ago, uh, I know I, I can remember which article has which pictures. I just just have it in my head. Um, but then I I, I got headhunted from there, and I went to a, a magazine which was much more interesting and totally fascinating, called Geographical Magazine, and I was the art director on that for uh, a couple of years. And then um, eventually, I just had enough of London, quit everything, and went walk about. So, um, but everything I everything I've seen is in my head and uh, very useful. So I don't work from photographs. Just don't. Uh, I just don't need them. Okay, I'm looking in the camera. see what can I do to this roadway. I think we have to have a lump of snow there. Clean lump of snow. Yep. So we've got two types of, almost two types of mountain here, but you get that uh, in the Pyrenees. I mean, this is as close as I can get to this uh, this particular 
uh, hill that stuck firmly in my mind. It was like it was almost like something out of a out of a horror film. The way the light was behind it and the light between the trees, which I can't do now because it's way too wet for that. But uh, I might add those and um, upload the finished picture to my Facebook page. I put some light on there. I think. Let's have a little bit. Okay. Um, anyway, I remember as I was wandering around looking at this and I thought what a contrast between the two These sharp almost glass like mountains next to these slightly rolling hills I think if I had enough money and um, good enough uh, internet connection I would really like to go and live there beautiful place Okay, so just a, little, a little bit of distance. See that little dot there? Totally accidental, but it looks okay. In fact, I like I like it so much. I'm going to give it a little friend. Here we go. Just another little mark. Just there. Just so it takes you further and further away. When this is dry, I think I will do a follow-up. I'm trying. To, well, okay. Let's uh, clear something up here. I, I think people who are watching my YouTubes prefer a painting from start to finish in one go. Now I could be, I could be totally wrong on that. Correct me if I'm wrong. But some people don't seem to be interested in the follow-up. They're interested in the first painting, but they're not. I'm not. I'm looking at the numbers that I get, and um, the numbers for the follow-up are often way down. Now <laughs> either I bored them to death in the first video or they're just not interested because they I think do people really just want to see a painting from start to finish so they got the whole lesson neatly packaged uh, for them to follow in one go I don't know maybe l let me know it's all interesting data um, I don't honestly know but do people come back to look at the second part? Let me know. It'd be very. In I'm sorry, I'm going on about this. It would be very interesting for me to know uh, that, because ultimately, if I could, uh, it, I, if I could just make a living from making YouTube videos, that would be great. At the moment, I design books as well, and I have done for the last um, 16 years, I think, for a company in. The UK and I got no problem with doing that. I actually quite enjoyed designing books, but I guess you know I have to I have to allow for the fact that one day when I get really old, I mean I'm really old now, but really really old, I may just want to paint pictures. Um, but obviously I can't do that unless I'm making enough money. I'm not in any hurry to stop uh, on the book side. It is actually quite fascinating, actually, the books. Never know what's going to pop in my inbox. It's, um, company is um, owned by a friend of mine in the UK. So if you're watching this, John, hello. It's John Hunt Publishing. You look them up on the internet you may want to buy a book from them mm -hmm. I'm going to be stopping soon because uh, it's getting it's getting to the point now where there's a lot of paint on here and there are some other there are some parts where I suppose I could do a bit more work but do I do it now or do I do it later you let me know if you want to see a follow-up of this let me know seriously and i'll go i'll go by the numbers if people are interested it will appear but i really am almost at the stage now where uh it's just too wet hope you've enjoyed the video hope i haven't rambled too much people seem to like my ramblings but uh, Maybe they're just being polite. I don't know. Let's just have a shape there, I think. 
Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna probably stop now and upload this video. It's going to take a while, obviously, so uh, hopefully it won't take too long. There. Eh? Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something. Let me know. Uh, I will get on and paint a seascape soon. I'm sort of building up to it. Just haven't got around to it yet. And um, yeah. Follow me on Facebook if you want. Uh, the link will be below. Uh, if you are filthy rich and you feel like throwing money my way, um, I have a Patreon page. If you want to donate, it all goes on paint and cat food. Um, but, oh, I just I, I keep I, I'm notorious at this. I, I say one thing and I do another. I say, all right, I'm stopping now, but then I don't. I see something else that just just needs a little tickle done to it and uh, there, maybe I've tickled enough it's definitely cold isn't it anyway I'll see you next time take care out there and um, stay well bye for now <laughs>